to our Hutt Valley Business Breakfast on Wednesday morning. I think today's our last day of Level 3, so uh, if you're not feeling jaded, then I am. Um, well, actually, I'm sure you are feeling a bit jaded after after seven weeks, James tells me, um, of of uh, us doing live streams and working from home and that sort of thing. So this morning we're going to look at marketing and our guest this morning is James Lamb from the Hutt City Council. James is actually called the City Promotions Manager and I've been working with James uh, now every day for seven weeks since uh, we kicked off our Hutt Valley COVID-19 business response team and uh, James is a part of that. In James's uh, day job when we're not doing COVID, his role is around city promotions and encouraging people to visit Hutt City in the tourism space and to bring people into the city. So he spends a lot of time in the marketing space and given the challenges we all face, getting seen by your customers and being where your customers are looking and adapting to their changing Buying behaviour is a really important part of our recovery out of COVID-19. So delighted to welcome you this morning, James, and thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. Thanks, Helen. Um, it's awesome to be live, live streaming again. And I have to say congrats to uh, the Chamber and Hannah and the team for, I guess, getting up, what, it's 23 live streams now. I was just thinking, um, we were just chatting off air, in fact, about um, taking the plunge as the first live stream uh, on Wednesday. It was actually seven weeks ago to the um, to the day. Uh, and um, that uneasy feeling when you do something for the first time and push yourself out of the comfort zone uh, and uh, being the first live stream here. So it's awesome to be back um, on the last day of Alert Level 3, as you say, uh, and um, going into the new world. Um, I guess that probably sums up a lot of what we are we are doing as business owners and people around us pushing ourselves doing out doing new things that we've never done um, before um, and it's part of what we'll talk about today um, in terms of getting your story out there um, who you are as a business who you are as a person and um, we've all been taking the plunge it's certainly scary um, but it gets easier I have to say coming into this stream uh, has is um, feeling a lot more comfortable, but um, getting out there is definitely um, what we can all do as storytellers um, on our social media channels and on our websites uh, and um, on our storefronts. Hey, so today I want to cover um, how you can make your business visible and how you can be seen. And I guess I want to answer that through reversing that a little. Um, you know, can your customers see you is probably the better ask, um, question to ask. Um, and I'm going to talk about today about choosing where to put your effort uh, when promoting your business. Um, I want to cover off some low cost, sometimes free ways to promote your business and, and uh, you, working in this team um, has been a, a bit of a privilege getting to know our businesses around us and, and as uh, Helen has said, working uh, as Hutt City Council City Promotions Manager, it means I get to interact with a whole lot um, of uh, businesses around the city. And um, my day job usually is around uh, promoting the Hutt Valley is a great place to visit, study uh, and do business. Uh, we work very closely with Upper Hutt City Council and the Hutt never fails to impress me with new and awesome things that pop up. Uh, and um, I hope that as, as we continue to do this, and um, you continue to promote your business, we can shine a light on all of the great people around us, making, baking, creating, caring, uh, and making a, hard, a, you know, a really vibrant place. I, I often talk to businesses who want me to help put their message um, everywhere. Uh, we've got this new thing, where can I put it? Where can I put my message? I want it here, I want it there. Um, what, where's everyone, where's uh, every place that I can put it? And as much as it, we can make that happen to a point, um, I have to say it's not always the answer. So I'm going to let you in on a secret here. This isn't a session full of quick fixes. Um, this is more of a session about some immediate things you can do um, and some really simple things that you can do to make sure um, that you are doing the best for your customers. Um, it doesn't always have to involve big money. Uh, and it's often about getting the basics right first. So how can you make your um, business visible to your customers? I guess it's uh, first things first, it's about making the journey easy and becoming discoverable. Even before you spend money on an advert or putting yourself out there, and before you even think about um, 
advertising promotion or what have you we want to know um, that you are visible to your customers we know that word of mouth is huge um, every kind of survey we do for our events through um, other um, people discovering businesses for um, when businesses ask that simple question how did how did you find out about us um, word of mouth is huge and often uh, even just social media or a um, internet search and it's often about the way people come across your business so put yourself in your customers shoes and think about your customers uh, as a person who are they what do they do what are they looking at um, and also do you know anyone like them and who do you know that you could um, you could model that off. I have to admit that there may be someone watching right now um, who we model our um, target persona off. Um, I use the word persona because we like to use model them as a, a bit of a personality. So every time we're doing a post or every time we're doing some advertising, we think of them as if we are talking to them, uh, and it's it's a great way of keeping that in our minds. Um, it, and it's all, also remembering that. Uh, that, that is customer first, it's not necessarily your product first. And oftentimes when people ask me, um, or I ask your, a, a business, um, how well do you know your customers? They might say, um, people who like burgers, or people who want to have their names on their shirts. Um, but it's got to have to be a lot more of it. It's what are, what do they value in life? Where are they looking? What's on their Facebook page? Everybody's Facebook page and stream is different. And so how, you know, what are they looking at? And can you paint a picture of um, what they're doing in life, where they're going, um, magazines that they're reading, billboards that they're look, driving past? Um, and, and obviously a customer that is a family is going to be all about convenience and value. Sure as for me as a dad. Um, and a customer uh, who is willing to spend a little bit more money perhaps um, loves attention to detail, the, the knowledge, the longevity of your, your company and how you're putting that across. Um, I think it's uh, important to go back to that first point of contact with your business. Uh, your, you might be watching TV, you see an ad, what do you do? You jump on your phone, you're using um, some words and you're probably just going to type that straight into your bar uh, your the address bar um, or a Google search and um, It might be that you reach over and say hey honey what was it? What was that name of the takeaways that? Um, Dave told us about the other day and we might search under a business name. We might search under um, takeaways near me we might search under burgers and Petoni we might search for, like we did the other day, a chimney sweeper, um, an upper hut. And what is it that your customers are going to see um, first? So a huge, we know that a huge amount of searches uh, are in fact actually for your business name. And it's that um, important arrival on the first page of Google that you need to nail. Uh, the, the best thing you can do and the easiest thing you can do, in fact, that's free, is take up your Google My Business listing. And I was pointed to a really great example yesterday where a business owner had uh, put in a message about their latest uh, status uh, on their Google My Business listing. They had updated the photos on that listing to include their menu. Uh, and they could um, put, you know, that obviously had their hours, their phone numbers, their website. And um, there's a there's a whole lot of power in these little things here, and I actually did it myself. And um, there, Google My Business or Google Maps is in fact a huge uh, second version of Wikipedia. Uh, I'm a Google Google local guide, uh, just like millions of other people around uh, the world. And I actually came across a takeaway in Queen's Drive in Lower Hutt uh, that I knew was out of date. Uh, and I quickly jumped onto that Google listing, and there's a neat little thing there called suggest and edit. So anyone can do this, uh, whether it's for your business or somebody else's. And I jumped in, updated the website. Um, I actually went onto the website, checked their phone number, been a little bit proactive there, and um, made sure that um, those details was correct as, as possible. And sure enough, um, an hour later, I had an email back from Google to say my um, changes 
had been approved. Um, and people are doing this all over the place. So your customers can do this, you can do this, uh, and it's often the first thing that pops up on the right-hand screen of that search um, result as well, if they're grabbing uh, or looking for your business. Um, I have to um, admit here that when, it was probably a few years ago that Google had introduced, in fact, it was probably two years ago, Google introduced the, the Google Travel Guide. It's fair to say we've got a fair way to go yet, but I cried a few tears when I looked under Lower Hut for the Google um, Travel Guide because there is a picture of um, a whole lot of fencing around a deconstructed building with sand on the road and gravel and what have you, um, and a very grey, dull image of Ewan Bridge. Uh, and um, over time, that has changed because we've got a whole lot of people out there uh, contributing to um, Google and uh, putting up images and putting um, content on there. Uh, you can add, obviously, customers are adding reviews. You can put photos on there yourself um, and make sure all your um, details are up there. It's If it's an ad that they see, if it's a, um, a recommendation a friend makes, uh, or it's even just walking down the street and recognizing that you've got a neat little sticker on the outside saying, hey, we're open, we're open online. They'll jump on and you want to make it easy as possible um, for them to find you there. Again, put yourself in your customer's shoes. Think like your customer and other words that jump onto Google, have a check it out. What What is coming up when you are Googling your business and um, think about the solution that they're trying to find as well. So um, you're using keywords that they're using. You're not using business terms, but you're using everyday English, um, plain English terms that they're likely to search for. So they're probably not going to um, dream up some um, beautiful um, electrical terms or amazing um, jargon that you might use as, as an electrician, but they sure as heck going to want to say, I need to fix my oven or I've, um, there are lights um, I need to fix, or um, just simple words, simple solutions uh, that they can, can look for. This also comes up in your Google search results and uh, your, um, you'll obviously get the link you can click and then there's some words underneath that. And again, this is an opportunity to use the words that your customers are, are looking for. Uh, and it's from here that uh, your search results are, are derived. You might have, um, or your Google linking, uh, sorry, your um, Google ranking, I should say, you'll rank higher um, in a number of ways. You might have heard of SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, and if you don't know anything about that and that freaks you out a little bit, the best thing you can do is actually just use your customer speak, talk in their words, use their keywords, add the words upper hut or lower hut or petoni or whatever's relevant in terms of location and um, to that opening paragraph on your website. So that's the very first bit that comes into your um, Google search result as well. Um, Google will rank you higher if you have original content, you're adding to it regularly. You don't need to um, do it every day or every week. But if, if there is a regular pattern of new content on your site, Google's going to reward you. So it could just be new products, new things you're doing. Uh, and of course, the big one is about being mobile friendly. So you, um, we ourselves are actually um, penalized quite heavily uh, for our website. So hupperlnz.com was quite um, clunky. Uh, and we made quite a bit of effort into making it mobile friendly and fast. Uh, and now we're seeing much higher Google rankings because of that. Uh, and Google takes a lot of um, or favors uh, things uh, that are faster. Clearly a customer, I think research shows you that after about four, five, six, seven seconds, you've, they've gone, they've moved on, they've tried something else. So you want to be able to have a site that loads within seconds you know we still live in that now 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 world um even though we are a little bit more caring um right now and probably a little bit more patient but obviously google right now is rewarding uh, fast sites there's lots of tools 
out there that you can use. You can even go into test my site on Google. Um, that's probably getting quite um, a bit of detail, but you can um, do it um, in different ways. And I guess your um, storefront is also your billboard as well. So as I said before, people might be driving past. So what are you doing on your storefront to make sure that it's obvious for people um, that you are um, open and online? Uh, and of course, social media, uh, everybody's doing it. It's out there and it's often the case of, of when people talk about what generates a lot of referrals back to their business. I want to say something really simple that a lot of us forget. Social media. Two words. The first word of that is social. Social media needs to be social. It's not about broadcasting your latest product or um, bombarding them with messages brought, uh, and pushing stuff out. Social media, you win on social media when you are social. It's about personality. It's about stories. It's about um, interacting as you normally would. You wouldn't just walk into a room and say, hey, would you like to buy my pie? It's $5. You would introduce yourself. You'd say hi. You'd um, strike up a relationship. And then you'd tell them about your awesome pie. Uh, and again, coming back to the first point around, do you know your customers? Where are they at? Where are they hanging out? Social media isn't a, a game of putting yourself everywhere and trying to um, new, do new posts every day. You want to think about the channels where they hang out. Um, it's, it could be that um, they are choosing particular um, channels for different things. Uh, and naturally, Facebook um, recognizes and pulls posts into people's news feeds more so when people are engaging with them and collaborating. And of course, naturally, when you are asking questions or you're telling a story or you're inviting feedback or uh, engaging of people, you've got a call to action on there, um, you're going to um, get that. Uh, and I guess the other key thing here is around your story uh, and relationships. So putting that social back into social media, uh, you want to um, give your give your customers an insight as to who you are. This, this kind of stuff is not necessarily instant. Yes, you can advertise on Facebook and you can plug away for five or five or $10 a day um, and make an, a neat little advert. But when people come to buy from you, they want to buy from a, a person. They want to know who you are. Um, they want to trust you. Uh, and they're oftentimes willing to pay you know, more money um, for that. So it could be that you celebrate your milestones, achievements, birthdays, give us an insight into who you are. Um, the best story I've discovered recently is a certain coffee roaster uh, who was a mechanic once. And clearly he can roast good coffee because he can make his own roasters um, to boot. Um, so give us an insight as to who you are and what you're up to. Um, be consistent um, and never post for the sake of posting. It's better to do really three really great posts than try and do um, a whole lot more. Um, rather than you know, one a day is not necessarily the best thing to do. Let's do two or three a week or two or three a fortnight. That are, that's going to be a much more um, higher quality and, and engage with your customers. And I can't say enough about images. A colleague of mine recently encouraged uh, and businesses um, with a professional photographer who went around um, and took simple photos of their products and the uh, engagement and the interest that was gained from a really great good quality photo um, was huge and so I can't emphasize that enough. Um, you, the phones these days are amazing and um, think about the angle you're taking them on uh, and use use that uh, and to your advantage. Um, and the other really important thing to remember is your customers are your best advocates. So back to the Google thing, you're inviting them for reviews and they are contributing information. And um, But also in terms of marketing, uh, you can uh, use them 
as a way of getting your message out there. I know a local hire company who gives a little card to every single customer after they've um, returned their equipment and invites them to take make a review. Uh, it's a little note that goes out with their order, thanking them for their order. Again, adding some personality in there. Um, it's an, how, And also, how are you making it easy for them uh, to find you as well? So on that little card, you're including all your little social media links. You're encouraging people to tag your business. And instead of doing a $2,000 full page ad, you could actually spend a dollar or two uh, really surprising and delighting them. Um, make their day just randomly, and that'll be something that they will probably want to then talk about and tag um, you in as well. So again, going back to that generating of um, that word of mouth. I guess right now there's a real care for businesses and uh, customers um, really want to do the best by businesses and the businesses who are showing their customers that they care um, are certainly winning as well. So do find a way to strike up a conversation and ask, grab them while they're there. Who are you? Where did you find us? Um, who? What do you do? Um, use every um, interaction with your customers as a bit of a, um, a research exercise. We know that uh, the uh, content on social media or on websites that has been generated by customers um, is I think it's something horrendous, like there is 92% more chance of a sale or engagement from something that is real, authentic and come, has come from a customer uh, than um, something that is you know, overly glossy and overly um, generated and done in um, you know, sales speak. And so again, strike up those relationships uh, and and see what your customers can do for you. Um, I think we're going back to that old world mentality of the, the going down to the village of the, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and the currency we're going to trade in is, is relationships. And I, I think we'll see a lot more of that um, emerge now. So high tech and online and going digital is definitely place to be, but it but it needs to be balanced uh, with the with the relationships we have, the interactions we have with our customers. Um, and do when when you are online, stick to a few things. Do one or two things really well. I know a certain kebab shop in High Street who puts a lot of their effort into their Google My Business listings. They respond to reviews. And they do that really well. They just so happens to be, have great reviews on there uh, and an up-to-date menu uh, and up-to-date messages on there as well. Um, and so I just wanted to sum up now uh, and say that the best thing you can do is strike out relationships with your customers. Um, the, the answer to marketing your business is not necessarily a spray and pray, um, pray approach of putting your message everywhere. It's starting from your storefront. What is your message up there? It's starting with how people can discover you. Are you have you got your details out there? Uh, and are you able to be discovered um, by your, your customers? So I just wanted to uh, end there. We can um, go back to, to Helen. Uh, but before I do, uh, in terms of businesses wanting to share stuff with us, um, we're really keen to hear from you on what you're up to. And uh, you can tag us on Twitter, uh, at The Hut, on Instagram, HutfullyNZ, and on Facebook, you can find us uh, on HutfullyNZ as well. Great. Thank you very much, James. That's really informative. It's interesting you were talking about social and relationships and certainly we can see as a, as a support team for the Hutt Valley business community how important those relationships are and that's all what people are relying on right now, isn't it? Yeah. On the people they and, know and the people they trust. And uh, we often think that the, pro the solution to our problem is going out and spending a lot of money on a flashy ad and being seen everywhere, but there's just so much power in making someone's day across the counter or giving them a really great experience and then just asking them because people will, um, particularly in these times where we care so much, to um, add an extra review in or jump onto Facebook and tell their friends or um, what have you. It's, it's so powerful. Yeah, sure. We had a conversation um, last, I think about a week ago in our support team, James, about the importance of photos of people 
rather than just product? Do you want to make a comment on that? Indeed. I think uh, people these days want to see who you are. They want to trust you. They want to know that you're a credible business. Um, people, we don't, um, we, I mean, purchasing decisions aren't necessarily all on price. Uh, and I think when you can show who you are, uh, and build up a bit of a story, then that goes to creating some really loyal customers because they know who you are. They, um, I have to say, I walk um, into a certain business and an owner will tell me that I haven't been there for seven and a half weeks. Um, they know me incredibly well. Uh, and I know them because um, I can see what they're up to. And so it's like dealing with friends. Uh, and I think oftentimes we need to um, remember that when we are on social media, we are on our website, is what can we do to set up our, our business so that we are um, just talking to our friends and we are um, just using that everyday language. It's not necessarily gonna suit every business because they're obviously professional services companies want to do that in a slightly different way, but um, yeah, definitely people first and, and put your face out there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, James. I don't think we've got any other questions um, this morning, but uh, James, I'm sure you, you'll pop out your uh, contact details as well. Would you pop that absolutely. in the comments field sure for us? Well. Yeah. And the Hutt Valley NZ website, which is a great yes. source of information around um, what's going on across Upper Hutt and Lower Hutt as well, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Uh, and so we'll be adding more and more to that uh, as we move into Alert Level 2. Uh, and we tell the stories of other great businesses around the city. And Great. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's lovely. So thank you very much for your time this morning, James, and um, I'll catch you in a little while. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, everyone.